Hey guys, welcome back. It's Maverick here today with episode 7 of Metsu no Anate. So, we are certainly in an interesting part of the series where Fushi has finally learned how to, you know, actually speak his thoughts and carry on a semi-intelligent conversation with others, which is really important because it now allows us to relate with the main character a lot more and understand where exactly he's going with all of this, right? And then, of course, we also, in the last episode, had the, um... How can I say this? The, uh, the, the deities, right? The deities themselves have shown up and uh, expressed some stuff, which I reckon probably will not be that important uh, right now, at least for these next few episodes. But then again, I could be entirely wrong, right? Certainly, I feel like these next few episodes are going to set the tone for what we can expect going forward. So with that in mind, let's get into the episode. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. I am your maker. <laughs> Again, remind me a lot of Prometheus. I can't be the only one that feels like this, right? Meet your maker. Mm-hmm. All right, so just a recap of last episode. Bye-bye. Oh. Huh. Well, at least we got a little bit of a recap, right? What other series feature something similar like this? Where, you know, the cre meeting your maker, you know, that kind of thing. Allowing you to have a idea of self-growth and self-discovery, but still within the overall confines of a higher power. Obviously, I'm I'm first looking through beyond Prometheus, Prometheus, which I've already mentioned. I'm searching my memories for light novels and other animes or mangas. I mean, certainly not in this case where it seems that. Like, there have been many light novels and, and web novels and whatnot where a deity summons someone from another world or whatnot for a specific plan of some sort. But um, something of this sort where the character in question has to go through a complete series of self-growth first... Let me guess, their money is going to get stolen or something? Kawaritai Shonen. Dana some. Okay, so, again, once again, but these cities of this place are... Like, it definitely has a very unique mix of both Eastern and Western culture. What the 
toaster. Is that a boar? Win tomorrow. Gambling? I definitely feel like he's going gambling or something. a weird looking dog but eh, quite cute I gotta say all right so what does this have to do with Fushi oh it's from that girl Okay, so I guess, so I guess she's the girl that lives on the hill. <laughs> well, let me guess, he's going to tell his brother, his brother's going to take Get in. Read the note. What does the note? Right. I still think it's probably gambling of some sort. <laughs> And of course, he's not going to sell it. Huh. Railroad tracks, eh? Really interesting. Well, that was close.
Why would you... Well, I guess this is another thing that it has in common with Prometheus. The Prometheus method of running directly into the danger. Oof. Rene. Wait, how are you still alive? Holy shit. Oh, he didn't fall into the water. What? He's not dead? Ah, oh, wait. This is the dude that we saw at the end of last episode, right? I guess his face is probably smashed in. So this guy is probably like some sort of doctor, right? Some sort of unlicensed doctor? Alright, here we go. Oof. You're certainly taking everything in stride, dude. Goku. Boost, man. <laughs> so I'm not just a doctor, but also a brewer, eh? Are you going to taste some? Yep.
what would happen once everything... He just wants to <laughs> use it. Yeah, Fushi just wants to put on a mask. <laughs> He actually has changed clothes. <laughs> Chinese way of um, of cooking and whatnot. Oh, yeah, like this is just a mix of so many different cultures. Is he going to mention March? Oh damn, even with that sort of uh... <laughs> What's it called in English? It's called a Hulu in Chinese, but... I'm not really sure how to say it in English. I never thought I would have seen that in a Western... Well then again, this is not Western produced. This is a Japanese anime. And it's just Fushi's luck to always meet people like Gugu and uh, and March, right? I think that's fried rice that he's eating. <laughs> Is this dude also going to be killed off? I feel like that's very possible here.
<laughs> she is quite cute, though. I mean, whatever happened to to Gugu isn't really her fault. Like, she's just completely innocent. <laughs> For from everything, so I don't really think you can blame the girl, right? And just like those two to be listening from the back, right? <laughs> mean. <laughs> well, I mean, Fushi is an Ikemen, right? Certainly, uh, was very, um, was very lucky for his first encounter to be that boy. And he's gonna be like, let me educate him! <laughs> Your first heartbreak? <laughs> yep, first heartbreak. <laughs> I feel bad, but, you know, I feel like this was a pretty uh, obvious outcome. He's a nice guy, right? <laughs> that was a little fast. I, I couldn't quite get who was a uh, voice acting being. Come on, you gotta laugh along. You gotta laugh along. Alright. Yep, this is a preview, so let's not look at this. I'll see you guys after this. Well, alright, guys, that was episode 7. And we enter a new arc now, and obviously, one of the main characters is going to be Gugu, right? However, that probably also means that uh, he is next up on the chopping block. And I really hate to say this, but especially with the president from last arc, uh, you definitely get this kind of feeling that Gugu is going to become the second March. And especially with everything that's been happening so far, uh, you, you definitely also further see the similarities between what's happening to him and what ultimately happened to March, right? Yeah, a, a very, you know, a, a, a relatively young child having a, you know, doing their best, um, having their trying their best to have a positive outlook on life, even though they go through some hardships and whatnot, they still try to, to fight their fate, fight their destiny, but ultimately, you know, they are still killed and, um, 
and observed by Fushi, right? That's also an important factor to consider here. Fushi can't really gain another form unless, you know, he sees someone killed in front of him. And um, I, I feel like this might become a pattern going forward to see all the hopes and dreams and the various wishes of these characters that Fushi interacts with, and then for Fushi to ultimately be carrying their, um, you know, their legacy forward, right? In, in some sort of weird way, even though he doesn't really have any... Um, any understanding of that himself, you know, that's just something that that happens and continues on, right? And certainly for for Guru right now, you definitely feel like there's lots of places that could go wrong, right? We we have so many different warning flags here. For one thing, um, I did uh, unfortunately see a little bit of the preview, and they were talking about something, um, you know, leaving somebody something inside Gugu's body, right? The the old man. Um, definitely one thing that I was thinking from the throughout the entire episode was why his stomach had a little uh, bulge there, right? Like what exactly was that? Um, you know, I thought. Because he he harmed his head, right? So what does that have to do with his stomach there or or whatnot? And by the way, like I can't believe that Gugu survived that. He he fell. I thought he fell into the water or or whatnot. He actually fell onto rocks, and then his face was smashed in by a log of that weight. I can't believe that he actually survived that. But but anyways, um. You know, we we got that thing right, like that that thing within his stomach that seems to be like something important here. That's one thing. Uh, a second thing is the ring that Rin gave to him, right? Now I I do feel like Rin is, the girl is probably going to be an innocent character throughout the entire arc, right? She she definitely seems to be um you no know, I, I wouldn't say that she's she's good or bad or anything. She's just an innocent an innocent girl. She's she's probably also uh a very positive girl. And hey. She she did uh, willingly give the ring, even though that's worth a lot to to Gugu. Um, even though all he did was really just find her dog, which he probably would have found in in a few minutes anyways, right? So you can't really blame her for anything here, and I feel like she's going to be a non-factor um, in terms of her personality uh, throughout the entire arc. Even though we do see Gugu, um, I, I instead have a feeling that Gugu's probably going to get into some situations due to his infatuation with Rin and whatnot. Um, and in fact, one of the things that I'm thinking about already is the ring, right? Now, even though I feel like if he were to take that ring out and, and show it to Rin or something like that, you know, there, there might be some, some words of thanks or, or so on and so forth, but it could also easily turn into a situation of misunderstanding, right? Either him being blamed for, for Rin's injuries or whatnot, or perhaps even worse, uh, at a situation where Rin was not there, um, you know, her family might accuse Gugu of stealing the ring. Or, or something of that sort, right? Especially if Rin herself has not mentioned about that ring to her, to her parents, and so on and so forth. I, I could definitely see a possibility of it going like that. Um, and heck, the, the third, uh, the third warning flag here is obviously his older brother, right? Now I feel like he probably went to do some gambling or whatnot. They mentioned something about winning. It's either gambling or perhaps uh, some sort of fighting tournament or something of that sort, right? And, um, you know, if I were really to, to think of a twisted way to end this in tragedy, you know, I, I think the most twisted method would probably for his brother to actually, you know, be successful w with what he's trying to do and changing his fate and all that, uh, and managing to get a job as maybe one of the guards uh, within Rin's family or whatnot. And then we go through the, the other stage, which, which is what I'm talking about, you know, some sort of misunderstanding or whatnot, where uh, Rin is essentially being, um, where Rin is essentially being, uh, uh, accused of something and then his brother being ordered to to um you know take him take him down or or kill him or something of that sort and um his brother probably would not want to associate himself with his little brother there due to you know him wanting to change his fate and, and you know that that kind of situation right that kind of twisted situation in fact you know the more that I think about it, the more that I think that it might be plausible for this series to go in such a manner, right? Definitely twisted, but at the same time, uh, with what has happened already in the last arc, I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if we do get such a tragedy here, right? 
Um, but then again, that is just speculation, right? Uh, so it could go an entirely different matter from what I am uh, expecting here. But you know, nonetheless, I do feel like these are the three things that we need to take notice of um, in, going forward, right? The the stomach of Gugu, uh, the ring that he still has, the ring of Rin, and then finally his older brother. I feel like these are important factors within all this. Um, as for the rest, uh, you know, Fushi's growth and all that, eh, not really too much to comment on at this point. Uh, and once again, I do feel very, um, you know, very uh, interested in how, uh, can you say interested? A uh, very, how can I say this? Uh, I feel like it's, the, the culture aspects of this anime is definitely something special, right? You know, in, in the previous arc, I mentioned about how, you know, they had uh, uh, the culture and the architecture and the things that they used. It, it had elements of Orientalism uh, or um, and Western, you know, Western as in Eurocentric and whatnot. And then also some aspects of like Native Americans and, and so on and so forth, right? Like that kind of blend of cultures. Here you definitely see some Chinese influence uh, over everything, but then also a very predominantly uh, European influence as well, a European, Euro, uh, American kind of influence uh, amongst everything here. Um, within, you know, the things that they use, the food they eat, uh, you know, like, it's, it's, it's really weird, right? It's, it's a really weird mishmash of, of cultures, but I, uh, I think I mentioned this before already, and this seems to be something that's going to go forward throughout all these series as well. It is quite interesting, right, to see how exactly they blend a lot of these things together. Not that it really makes sense, right? It doesn't, it, it actually doesn't, because there's reasons why various elements and various stuff have evolved as they had throughout different cultures throughout the years. It doesn't really make sense to blend them all together, but it definitely makes for a pretty unique sort of um, sort of world and sort of culture here that um, I guess you really shouldn't dig too deep into, but just enjoy the aesthetic. So anyways, that's it for episode 7 of Fumetsu no Anata. Thank you guys, I'll see you guys next time.